Welcome back to Marcia Speaks, where we are speaking life and giving truth. This is part two of my three-part series, How to Become an Undefeated Spiritual Champion. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button below so you can subscribe to my channel and make sure you hit the notification bell so you are notified each time I post a new video. Remember, this is part two, so if you haven't watched part one of how to become an undefeated spiritual champion, pause this, pause this video right now and go check out the part one video, how to become a spiritual champion. So today, we're going to dig deeper on how to become an undefeated spiritual champion. We're going to talk about the importance of learning the word of God, how to incorporate that into your daily schedule. We're going to be talking about prayer. What is prayer and the importance of prayer and how do we pray? And then we're going to talk about how important it is to be a part of a community of faith. Okay, so let's get it in. Now, let me ask you a question before we get started. Do you have a Bible or a Bible app on your phone? That's the first step we need to take. You need to either get a Bible app on your phone. I use YouVersion on my phone and there's so many different Bible apps. So just go to your app store and type in Bible and it will come up with a list of different options for you. And you can choose which one you like best. Next, if you if you are more of a person who like to hold the book in your hand, you know, you're a person that like to turn the pages, then go to Amazon and order you a Bible. There are so many different types of Bibles out there. And the good thing about nowadays with the Bible, they have so many different types of versions of the Bible. And so first thing I would say is find what version you like best um, based on, go to Google and just type in a scripture, any scripture, and then just read the scripture in the different versions to figure out what version right, um resonates with you the most for me when i started reading the bible and i started reading the king king james version and i cannot pronounce a lot of the words in there and it was just i don't know i just couldn't connect with what i was reading and so then i started reading i think it's the new living translation version which i truly love um so you just have to figure out what version works for you but you need a Bible, whether it's a Bible app, whether it's a physical Bible. It's time for you to get into God's word. It's important for us to understand, first off, who God is, who God says we are, and to just lean on and learn about all his promises, all the miracles that he has performed, just to read about all the different stories in the Bible, all the different people in the Bible, because in the Bible, there's so many stories that we as individuals can resonate to now in our times. And as you see how God works through other people's life, you will also see how God will work through your life. And it just gives you that hope. Any situation that you're going through, you could go to the Bible and find answers. See, the Bible is the answer to all our questions and the problem to all our solutions. Let's say for me, I remember at times when I really first started walking with God and I had a lot of anxious thoughts. I had a lot of, a lot of feelings of insecurities, a lot of fears, uh, feelings of doubt. And I would just go to Google and um, say what, store, what scriptures in the Bible can I read that relates to anxiety, that relates to fear. And I would go scripture by scripture and just read in it. And see, that would give you the scripture to go to. But for me, I would go even a little deeper and I would just read the whole chapter because it was important to me to get the whole picture um, and just to get the whole story. And so the Bible is the key to everything because everything, like I said, everything we face is the answers in the Bible and the solution is in the Bible. And so it's important for us to understand who we are in God's eyes. That way, our own negative opinion of ourselves don't doesn't matter. Our past doesn't matter. What other people say won't matter. So if we're able to take that thought of that feeling and then go to the Bible 
and find a positive way to look at it and to replace that negative thought or feeling with a scripture from the Bible, it would change our lives. It would change our lives for the good. And then we will be able to fully walk in the presence of God. And that's how, the number one thing to us really and truly winning that spiritual Bible. Because when, the enemy, when you're in the ring with the enemy and he's telling you you're not good enough, then you can go back to the Bible and start calling out God's word, start saying God's word, uh, name out loud, start repeating the words in the Bible. See, the thing is the enemy gets mad when we open the Bible and he gets even madder when we call out God's word. So if you don't even know where to start, start with how you're feeling right now. Start with those negative thoughts and just go to Google and type in scriptures for anxiety scriptures for depression, scriptures for self-love, or scriptures for who God says I am. Because see, all of these things are important because when the enemy is trying to hit us this way and hit us that way and try to tell us who we are and who we not and try to bring up our past, we can just go to the Bible and we can just open the Bible or open our mouth and just let him know that those things don't matter. God is not thinking about that. God loves me regardless of I am free. You know, Jesus died on the cross for me and you. And by every stripe, guess what? We are healed. We are free. No one can shame us. No one can guilt us. Not even ourselves. Once God forgives us, he forgives us. And so we have to beat the enemy at his own game. So as soon as he even tries to open up his mouth or put that thought in our head, we can hit him with Bible verses and just kill it right in and there. So if you don't have a Bible, go to Amazon and order your Bible today. If you want to download an app on your phone, try version. And there are many other versions, um, apps that you can use. Sorry, there are many other apps that you can use. Download it tonight and just start digging in. The good thing about version is they have different devotions and they have different um, reading plans. Also, if you go to Google, you can just type in a Bible study or a Bible reading plan. And you can be very detailed about a Bible reading plan for women, a Bible reading plan for men. But it's very important for us to get into the Bible. And this should be a daily thing. So you need to sit down and say, when am I going to spend time with God? When am I going to spend time in God's word? For me, I wake up every morning and do my devotion time with God because I feel like it's so important to start your day with God. It just sets the standard for the rest of the day. Because remember what I said, as soon as you wake up and put your foot down and step outside the bed, a child of God, the enemy is coming for you. So why not start your day with God? The Bible has changed my life. God's word has changed my life. No matter how I'm feeling or what I'm feeling or what I'm thinking, I can always go back to his word to help uplift my spirit, to give me hope, to make me feel loved. So you need to get into the Bible. The next thing I want to talk about is prayer. Now, what is prayer? If you recall me saying that prayer is just a conversation with God, just like you call a friend up just to, just to talk to them about your day. Maybe you're frustrated about something. Maybe you're mad. Maybe you're trying to find answers. Your first response should be calling on God. Prayer is just simply, just like I'm sitting here having a conversation with you, that's prayer. Just you having a conversation with God, telling him how are you feeling, telling him what are you thinking, asking him for his help, asking him from his, for his guidance, and just waiting for his response. So you have to take time and pray. You can pray as many times as you want. You can pray for as little or as long as you want. But prayer is key. Like I said, you can pray. You can kneel to pray. You can pray laying down. You can pray whatever you are. Your eyes don't even have to be closed. Just as you open your mouth and say, Father, it's God. However you want to start your prayer, 
Just pray. Just talk to God. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, even if you just want to pray just to say thank you. He loves to hear from us. So how do you pray? So think about prayer as this. I'm going to use the acronym PRAY. Pray means P stands for praise, R stands for repent, A stands for ask, and Y stands for yield. So whenever you start your prayer, the first thing you want to do is always praise God. Remember, P stands for praise. Thank Him. Be grateful. Let Him know that you're so thankful for everything that He has done for you, everything that He's doing for you, and everything that He hasn't even done for you. You just want to thank Him. God loves a grateful heart. So take the time to thank God before you even ask for anything. We need to be able to thank Him. No, let Him know that we recognize everything that he is doing in our lives and that he is doing for us so please remember to start each prayer with thankfulness after you thank god and praise him and worship him you want to repent you want to ask god to forgive you for all your sins your sinful ways your sinful thoughts your sinful action you want to ask for his forgiveness you want to ask for him to help you to continue to forgive others. Because remember, the Bible says that in order for, for God to forgive us, we first must forgive. So ask God to please forgive you and ask him to continue to help you to forgive others. That is R, repent. A stands for ask. Ask God, sorry, Ask God for what your needs are. Ask God for the needs of others. So maybe you're praying for your kids, your family, a friend, a family member, or a complete stranger. When you're asking God for things, you don't only want to just think about yourself. You want to be thinking about others. Always remember, when you're asking God for things, remember the God that we serve. We serve a mighty God. So if you're asking for something, if you're asking him for something that you can do for yourself, he's going to be looking at you like you're crazy. And you're going to be wondering, why is God not answering your prayer? Because God is looking at you like, really? Are you really asking me this right now when you could be doing this for yourself? He's going to be looking at you like, you forgot who I was? Like, I'm a mighty God. Ask him the big ass. And don't be afraid because God can do any and everything that we ask him for. So if you're wondering why God is not answering your prayer, ask yourself, sorry, ask yourself, can I do this on my own? And if it's a yes, that's why God is saying, what's that, go big or go home? So ask him, because God already knows the desires of your heart. He's just waiting for you to open your mouth and ask him, because that shows that you believe in him and that you believe in his power. The next thing you want to do is yield. You want to yield. You want to ask God to please allow you to understand the plans and the agenda that he has for your life. And you want to ask him to allow you and let him know that you surrender it all. That you surrender it all to him. You want to say, God, please empty me of me and fill me up with you, oh God. May I only do what is in your will, what is in your plan. Oh God, may I be able to let go of my own ego, my own pride, my own feelings and do what you have destined for me to do. So you want to yield it all to God. You want to let him know that you trust him and that you're ready to do whatever he wants you to do. So remember, pray, praise, re sorry, praise, repent, ask and yield. And so let me let me break it down for you a little bit. I'm just going to do a sample prayer for you so you understand what I'm saying. So I usually do something simple as, Heavenly Father, I come to you today, oh God, with a grateful heart. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for giving me another opportunity to walk on this earth. Thank you for my kids. Thank you for my home. God, without you, I am nothing. 
God, without you, I have nothing. And I'm just so grateful for you, God. God, I ask that you forgive me for my sins, oh God, as I forgive those who have sinned against me. And if I'm having a hard time, God, letting go and forgiving people, please, oh God, show me the areas where I need to work on forgiveness. God, I ask that you continue to cover my family, oh God. I ask that you continue to protect them. God, I ask that you continue to open doors for me and close doors for me. I ask that you continue to enlarge my territory and extend my reach, God. I pray for those who are sick and shut in in the hospital. God, those who don't have any hope, oh God, those who don't have any love, those who are suffering, those who are being abused, oh God, I just ask that you fill them with your everlasting love and hope. God, I ask that you empty me of me and fill me up completely of you. I yield, oh God, I yield to you. May you take full control. I surrender it all to you, Father. May everything that I do be in your plan, oh God. May everything that I do be your agenda, God. Not my will, God, but yours. God, I ask all of these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. It could be even simpler than that, but that's a, just a simple prayer. Other examples of prayer is just, God, thank you for today. God, continue to guide my steps. Please continue to straighten my crooked path. Continue to go before me, oh God, and set my path straight. God, I thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen. God, I come to you today just to say thank you. I come to you at this moment to ask that you go before me as I walk into this building, oh God. I ask that you give me patience. I ask that you give me understanding. I ask that you give me strength and peace of mind. May everything that I do represent you and you only. May your words be my words. May your thoughts be my thoughts, God. Just thank you, oh God. Please, oh God, I surrender it to you. May you remove all nervousness and distractions. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen. Those are just some simple prayers, but it could just be like, God, I'm just feeling so sad right now. I don't know what to do. I'm feeling so overwhelmed. I don't understand what's going on. I need a word from you, oh God. Please remove these feelings, God. Just please and, and please, oh God, just please remove these feelings. In the name of Jesus, amen. Whatever, you can just cry out to him. But just open your mouth, call on his name, and pray to him. And God, even before you get into his word, you want to say a prayer so that he could be able to allow you to interpret the word the way that he wants you to interpret. Or you could even ask him to lead you to what scriptures that you he wants you to read at the time. And for me, like nowadays, before I call a friend or anybody up, I call on God. And then I will might call a friend up. Sometimes I'm satisfied. Sometimes I still feel like I need to talk to someone. That way God will give them the words to say to me. Or even God will help me interpret what they're saying the way that he wants me to hear it. So remember, God's word, prayer. The next thing we're going to talk about is a faith community. Now, that can be a church, that can be a group of individuals who believe in the same things that you believe in. Please remember that a church is just not a building. A church is when people are gathered together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It can be in someone's house. It can be outside. It could be anywhere. It's just when you all are coming together to do life together in the name of Jesus, where you guys come and you talk about the word, you talk about your different experience in life, and you share wisdom with each other. Church, there are so many great churches out there, but you just have to find what church works for you. My pastor always says, this, there's no perfect church, and if you find a perfect church, you better run, because something ain't right. So you just text church out or watch churches online to see which style of preaching or teaching you like the best. And the good thing about churches these days is you can watch online, but there's nothing like 
being in the house of the Lord. I mean, the anointing that you feel, the love that you feel when you're in the right house of the Lord. So you want to, if you go to a church and maybe you sit through the whole service and nothing resonates with you and you can't walk away with anything, that's not the church for, for you. I used to go to church and I'm like, what, what was the pastor talking about again? I, how can I apply this to my life? I don't understand. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure it's a place where you can learn. And when you learn that you're able to not only apply it to your life, but you're able to teach it to other people, right? Because what's the point of learning if you don't fully understand how to apply it to your life? And what's the point of just applying it to your life when you don't teach it to others? Because in every way and form, we're all our vessels of the most high, you know? So he put us here on the earth so we could, what, spread his word, you know, give other people hope. So find your church that resonates with you. Um, there are so many churches out there. They have so many different programs, Bible study, life groups. They have community outreach groups. But find a church that's perfect for you. And you will know when the church is right for you. You'll just feel it in your spirit. It, just, it will touch you in a way that you never felt before. And like I said, sometimes it might take one visit. Sometimes it might take two visits. Sometimes it might take you visiting one church or it might take you visiting 10 churches. But just find a church that works for you. And that church will be that church where you're like, oh, it's Sunday. I can't wait to go to church. I don't care if you're tired, if you your whole day is planned, you, you're getting up and you're going to church. And so let's remember that it's important for us to get into God's word, to get to know his word, to get to know who God is, and to get to know who God says we are, right? Then you want to pray. Prayer is so important. Remember, it's just an intimate conversation with God. And then you want to join a faith community, whether there's a church, whether there is a small group. But remember, God's word, prayer, and faith community. So, did you guys understand that? Are you guys still ready to be spiritual champions? Are you ready, ready to jump into that ring? We have one more video left, and I'm so excited to share with you guys. But before I leave you, let me leave you in a word and in, in a prayer. I'm sorry. Um, Heavenly Father, we come to you today, oh God, just to thank you for another day. God, we come to your throne, oh God, unworthy of your love. God, we ask that you continue to help us. For God, we ask that you forgive us for our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. God, we ask that you continue to set our path straight. May we always know who we are in your eyes. May we always know who you are. May we remember that you are God and God alone, that you are strong and mighty, that it doesn't matter what we face, that you will be able to defeat all giants, to remove all mountains, to get us out the wilderness. God, we trust and believe in you. We know that you created us with a purpose. We know that you love us. We know that we are forgiven, but God, don't ever let us forget that. No matter what storms we face, no matter what battles we face, no matter what tests we face, let us be able to hold on to your word and your word alone. God, we pray for those in need of your love and need of your hope. We lift them up to you. God, thank you for all my listeners. You know their needs, oh God. Just fill them up of you, oh God. Give them strength and peace of mind, oh God. Let them know how to start with reading the word. Or even if they've been reading the word, oh God, lead them to where you need them to be, oh God. Let them understand that you are their friend, that you are their first response, and that you will guide them along the way. God, let them find the right faith community to join where they can receive your word, where they can be filled with you and you alone. God, I just thank you for today. I thank you for tomorrow. In the name of your son, Jesus, amen. Well, I thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked it, please like, hit the like button below and leave me a comment. Until next time, remember, God loves you and so do I.